So good day, everybody. Hello again. We are here. We are at the Cancer Support Community in Newcastle County, Delaware on Lancaster Avenue, not far from Hocassin. And I am Jessica Lewis, your bi-weekly host. <laughs> and I am the founder of a company called Sculpt Your Life. Uh, you know what, if you want to learn more about me or find out more about my company, the easiest thing is just do a Google search. I've been told I pop up really fast under those conditions. Spell it any way you like. In Delaware, there's lots of ways to spell Lewis. <laughs> but if you're looking for my website and you want to get very specific about the web address, I did have to play with the spelling of the domain about 20 years ago when I went to purchase it because the one I wanted was already taken. So I have my company shirt on today, and you might be able to see my web address here. It's www.sculpt, spelled just the way you'd expect it to be spelled, but then uh, it's urlife.com. But again, if you just do a Google search. I'm sure you'll find me very fast. And I'm just so happy to be here again uh, at the wonderful cancer support community because um, it's a gorgeous day outside. We're outside, right? And they've done an awful lot of research on the medicinal benefits of the great outdoors. So if you're watching me on your phone or your tablet or your iPad or whatever, why don't you take it out on the porch and we can all be outside together and doing Tai Chi. Double prizes. <laughs> so the medicinal benefits of Tai Chi. Uh, it is true that I am accredited as a Tai Chi Cha instructor and also uh, accredited in a couple different styles of Tai Chi. But I'm also uh, a certified master personal trainer and nutritional counselor. And people ask me all the time, why do you do all three of those things? And here's why. Because it's been my own experience personally and my experience working with umpteen clients over the years that one really can meet or maintain literally any health goal or even just crank your health and well-being up to all-time highs if you will simply move really well, eat really well, and relax really, really well. Uh, and so I always say to people, it's sort of like each one of us is sitting on a stool that has three legs. You know how you can sit on a three-legged stool and even shorten up one of the legs and you can easily keep your seat. But if you whoop one leg away, you're going to fall over. So we always want to make sure that we're moving well, eating well, and relaxing well. But between you and me and the fence post, Facebook, you know, like a lot of people are watching. Honestly, I actually think the relaxing leg is more important. <laughs> Here's why. Because, again, it's been my own personal experience and, and my experience working with a lot of people. I've had a lot of clients over the years who eat exactly the way I tell them to eat or exercise exactly the way I tell them to exercise. I personally have checked all the boxes. But when someone has unaddressed stress on their plate, pun intended, at some point you're still going to have to kiss your health goodbye. There has to be a way to offload your stress. It can be the silent killer for a lot of people to have unaddressed stress. So one of the things I love about Tai Chi Cha is not only is it, you know, relaxing just because all Tai Chi practices are relaxing, but it also qualifies as low-level exercise. There are some people that come to me and they simply don't want to exercise. So at least if I'm getting them to do Tai Chi Cha, I'm getting them to do something. But also, the, probably the really coolest thing of all about Tai Chi Cha is that it has been qualified by some of our most well-respected medical communities as nothing other than mindfulness in motion. Uh, and you know what? You would have to have your head under a rock for the last 20 or so years to not have heard that mindfulness is really good for you. <laughs> a lot of people, though, they like the idea of mindfulness, but just sitting down with the express intent of emptying their minds is sort of like giving the monkey up there permission to run amok. It becomes a very unpleasant experience, and you end up uh, basically being more tense than you were before you started. I actually struggled with that when I first uh, 
decided when I was about 15 I wanted to learn how to meditate. I could never sit still long enough to get it done. So I love the idea that there are ways to practice mindfulness while you are moving. Right. So why don't we just get down to business. One of the only visual differences you're going to see between Tai Chi Cha and pretty much all the other styles of Tai Chi out there did you know if you Google Tai Chi, you could probably find about 50 different kinds of practice readily available. It, yeah, lots of different kinds of Tai Chi. Anyway. But the one visual distinction, even to a very untrained eye, is that in Tai Chi Cha, we move for a period of time. You know, we put one leg out and we move the body. We move it repeatedly, right? And then at some point, we simply flow back to a quiet resting position and we maintain that for just a moment or two just long enough to feel the sensations in the body when it's not moving and then we move on to the other side so the reason why that's important and one of the big distinctions about Tai Chi Cha is right there there's an obvious example of allowing your body to become allowing yourself to become very very mindful of your body just feeling the sensations of your body when it's not moving. How often throughout the day do you do that? Do you stop and literally not move and just feel the sensations in your body while doing so? Never, right? But it also gives us opportunity to very mindfully set up the next movement. Right? So those are examples of how Tai Chi Cha is a moving mindfulness practice. But another really important aspect about why we move sometimes and why sometimes we don't during Tai Chi Cha is because while you're doing the moving portions of the practice, you're actually activating and circulating all the energy that normally resides in your body more effectively than under normal conditions. And then when you come to stillness, all that energy you just kicked up and enhanced and increased actually settles down in your bone, not just your bones, in the marrow of your bones, which, of course, is the cradle of your immune system. And I don't think it's any accident or surprise that many long-time Tai Chi Cha practitioners tend to get very strong bones. So there's my osteoporosis uh, advertisement right there, too. All right, so let us just get started. First, let's figure out what that gentle... I'm not doing anything but noticing the sensations of my body when I'm at rest position is. I'm going to turn sideways for you. I think you'd be able to see it a little better that way. So go ahead and put your feet in some sort of comfortable V-shape. If my, if my feet were my hands and I could pick them up and just show them to you, you'd see that mine right now are sort of in this shape. The heels are a little closer than the toes. But any position that works for you is fine. Okay. Now, this is the way I normally stand when I'm not doing anything. My chiropractor would probably ding me for this because it may not look completely awesome to somebody who adjusts spines for a living. But this is, this is how I roll under normal conditions. Now, when we're going to find our own uh, particular rest position, though, what I'd like you to do is sort of play around with the tailbone a little bit and just let it tuck slightly. Just let it tuck slightly. Now, I don't know about you, but when that happens for me, here it is again when I'm just standing there, right? And here's my tailbone just softly and easily tucking a little bit. When that happens for me, my knees magically shift ever so slightly forward and so that the knees get a little soft, right? And most importantly, I feel the weight in my feet spreading all the way out to the outer margins of both my feet. When I'm like this, I mostly feel my weight in my heels. But when I'm like this, suddenly I feel the weight completely evenly distributed across the soles of both feet. So that's most of our rest position right there is from here down feeling the feet in absolute contact with the ground all the way out to the outer margins of both your feet and then we're also going to rest our hands as well so 
just allowing the arms to hang down from the shoulders for a moment. Notice the sensations of your arms completely at rest, just hanging down from the shoulders. And then just lift the fingers. So it's suddenly as if both the palms and the fingers of the hands are resting on something firm and horizontal. Okay. In fact, this um, entire practice with very few modifications can be performed in a chair. So if you were sitting down, your hands would probably be resting on your thighs right now. And so in reality, when you're doing the standing practice and you're just flowing to rest and feeling your body at rest, your hands are about the level of your the hinge of your hip. So here we are just feeling the sensations of the body when the body is not outwardly moving. And while we do that, I'm going to use my singing bowl for a moment. Let's just go ahead and sort of take our metaphysical temperature. Pick a spot somewhere inside your body to pay much closer attention to than you normally would while I call the bell, that's a fancy Buddhist way of saying I'm going to ring it. And until I call you back, your whole job is just to notice anything you happen to notice about this particular internal spot you are paying attention to. Okay? All right, so here we go. So welcome back, in case your awareness really left the space. And if your eyes were closed, you can go ahead and open them up. I didn't instruct you to close them, but sometimes people do. I think sometimes it's easier to pay attention to what's going on in our insides when our eyes are closed, but I didn't never want you to fall over. So that's why I didn't instruct you to do that. So here we are resting, and we're going to do as many of the moves as we have time for today. There's only 20. And by the way, because we have these little moments of rest in between the moves, you don't even have to do them in a particular prescribed order. That's one reason why Tai Chi Chi is not only really good for you, but many people experience it to be super easy to learn. And normally we do about nine repetitions. Uh, if it's one of those moves that has one foot out, we'll do nine on one side and then nine on the other. Sometimes uh, we'll do nine total. Sometimes we'll do three sets. And maybe each set has three parts to it. Just copy me. I'll coach you through it. Let's begin with a movement called rocking motion. And by the way, when I'm facing you, I'm going to mirror you. When I face sideways, I probably won't. But when I'm facing you, I'm going to mirror you. So we're going to begin by letting the left leg kind of move out to the side. Also, I want you to know, we use the effort of no effort during this practice. So the easiest way for you to do all these moves is always the best way, including not worrying about are you doing it right. That's a lot of work actually involved in thinking, am I doing this correctly? So just follow me and all will be well. You'll be doing more than good enough Tai Chi Cho. Okay. So here we go. We're going to let the left leg just kind of flow out to the side a little bit. Okay, I just sort of shifted away from it and almost moved out there by itself. And now we're simply going to let the weight actually flow to the back of the body. So we're just lengthening the knees again and putting the hands back here. And then we're just going to let it flow to the front of the body. And flow to the back. 
and flow to the front. Yeah, and flow to the back. And many people ask me, why is this called rocking motion? Because it doesn't feel like rocking motion at first, especially to folks who've never encountered it before. It feels like you're floating forward and then lifting up slightly and floating back and then lifting up slightly. But I got to tell you that if you do enough of these, you start to feel as if you are sitting in grandma's rocking chair or maybe the front porch glider. And this move actually has the longest roots trailing back into what is still commonly practiced ancient Chinese medicine. Even today, you might see people being prescribed several hundred of these a day, much faster than this, but the same movement. Because apparently this particular movement pattern is really good for neurological function. Great for people who are recovering from a stroke or are dealing with various neurological conditions. Balances out the electrical activity in the brain. Just let your knees be soft as you track forward and then just lengthen them. And let them be soft as you track back. And then lengthen them. And I, I bet you you're going to start to feel like you're rocking. I know if you think about it, rocking is one of the ways that we make ourselves feel better. It's always been that way. You often see kids rocking themselves that they're upset. Even if they're sitting in a chair, a stationary chair, and they'll just sort of rock their body. Standing on a couple of tufts of ground here, I lost my balance. Let's do a few more. Here comes our last one. We're just going to flow back the direction we came from and take a few moments to feel the body resting. And now we're going to do bird flaps its wings. I'm going to turn a little bit sideways to you so you can see it from a different direction. Now we're just going to let the hands be close to each other, and pretty much about halfway between the groin and the belly button. And we're going to let the weight just shift forward. The easiest way to do that is just sort of let yourself sink down. And the heels will naturally leave the ground. And the knees will naturally expand without working. And the hand just kind of get out of the knees way. Now we're going to draw a little circle in the air. That was one set of three. So we're going to do two more sets just like that. We just sort of sink and flip the little bird wings twice. That was once. Twice. Now, where the tips of your wings land, that's going to be the beginning and the ending of your circle. Let's do that one more time. And feel the body resting. Just feel your weight spreading all the way out to the outside margins of your feet. And just feel the sensations of your body when it's not doing much on the outside. Now we're going to do a, a whole bunch of moves where one foot is farther out than the other. So um, I'll start with around the platter. I'm going to put my left foot out there first. So how do we get the left foot out there? without working. It's actually very easy. So here's how we're going to do it. Do it with me. Let your body sink down a little lower, which is really just the case of letting your tailbone tuck a little more. And then let all of your weight flow away from the leg you want to extend. In this case, you want to extend the left leg. 
So you're going to flow all the way into your right. And when you are 100% in your right leg, you should be able to just extend the left knee without any effort at all. And the heel will just land wherever it wants to land. Now just imagine you've got a big round plate pretty much out in front of your heart. We're going to put our hands near the back of it. You can even imagine you've got like a ball of energy underneath each hand and the balls are on the plate. So we're going to let all the weight flow from the full rear leg into the empty front leg until the front leg's full and the back leg's empty. And the hands are going to flow out over the plate. And since the left leg's out there, we're going to flow out over the left leg and back over the leg. This is me zipping it. Just copy me. It's going to be awesome. Here we go. And you may be feeling that in some ways, this is like a larger version of that rocking sensation that you experience in rocking motion, or at least that I'm in grandma's front porch glider sensation. I think I feel a little bit more like that when I'm doing this move than in a rocking chair. Just gliding forward and without stopping, changing directions and gliding back. Yeah. And the hands flow out over whichever leg is out there. In this case, it's the left. And back towards the rear right leg. Let's do one more. And when you get all the way back in the back leg again, just stand up on it and let the body float back down to rest. Okay. Now let's do the other side. Here we go. We're going to, you're all near you now that I'm facing you. Let your body sink down. Let all of your weight flow into the left leg now because you want to extend your empty right leg. And there you go. And the hands are going to flow out over the right leg now, because that's the one that's sticking out there. And back over the left. Nice. But this is a good example of one of the movements that we typically do nine repetitions on each side. But in the interest of time, I may only do um, six of some of the other moves. And I may leave some of the forward-backward moves out. I don't want to cut you too much short. Let's do one more. And feel the body rest for a moment. Let's do a round the platter variation with your left leg out there. It starts the same. The only difference is right here. And then it's gone. There's a slight little variation in what we do with the hands for a moment. And then it's gone. Not really a moment. More like a third of the platter. Nice. Let's do two more. And flow back to rest. Feel your body, the sensations in your body when it's not doing much on the outside. I'm going to do the other side from the side. So here we go. We're just going to let the body sink down a little more. I'm going to let all the weight flow into the left leg now. So your empty right leg can extend. The hands come up. And we begin to go around the platter. But there's the little variation. And then it's gone. But see if you see my upper body is simply just sort of moving forward and back. Almost like a column. There's no need to lean. 
it's like the entire upper body is kind of riding on the hips. And the pelvis is simply moving forward and back. And kind of spilling forward here and tipping back up. Let's do one more. Nice. So if you're very body conscious, you might feel, if, if this were the pelvis, this is sort of the way it's shaped, you might feel it kind of spilling forward and tipping back up as you shift forward and back. Not quite as dramatically as what I'm illustrating with my hand, but slightly, right? It's almost like a bowl of water and you're kind of spilling a little water out of the front and then tipping it back up. Let's do bass drum and see if you feel and see that when you're watching me do it. Let your body sink down a little lower. Let all the weight shift to the right. Let your empty left leg extend. The hands are going to come up to about chest height, and they're about shoulder width apart, palms facing each other. So as we flow forward, the hands are going to just circle around like the outside steel rim of a high school marching band bass drum that's sort of invisibly strapped to your shoulders. You see if you see my upper body just kind of riding forward like a column. My little Buddha belly gets a little bit more round at the front here, and then it contracts on the way down. Let's flow back to the soles of the feet. That forward-backward kind of spilling of the pelvis causes the, the belly to expand and contract, or what we really think of is going on down here we have like an energetic heart pretty much in the very center of the body all the ancient cultures agree that's true in Tai Chi Chao speak we call it the Dan Tian here we go other side see if you feel the Dan Tian expanding here and contracting and expanding and contracting if you're not sure that you feel it, you can do a couple of the moves with your hands on the front and the back of you. I definitely feel it under my hands when I put my hands here. Let's do one more. Ah. <sighs> Let's do push-pull. That's a fun movement. Here we go. With the left foot out. And you probably also noticed that in all the Tai Chi Chun moves, at least some body part is drawing circles in the air. And even the weight shift is actually very circular. If you think about it, it's continuous. It doesn't stop. We just change directions and keep going. One more here. Ah. Nice. Other side. So why am I pointing all these things out? The Dantian allowing it to expand and contract, flowing from the Dantian flowing continuously, or you could say circularly, using the effort of no effort, drawing circles in the air with a hand, is because we're going to do one more here. Let's do pulling in the energy with your left leg out. It's because those are the governing principles, the principles of movement for Tai Chi Chi. So now we're beginning to get an idea of why when you're doing Tai Chi Chi it makes you feel so good. It's because you're consciously choosing to let your body move 
in all of the ways that things move most easily, most powerfully, most successfully in the universe. <laughs> Let's do one more. Hmm. And other sign. If you think about it, you know, things actually move very slowly in the universe. The arc of history is so, so long. We think of ourselves as having these long lives if we live two or past a hundred. But in reality, we are just a blip on the universe's radar. Just a blip. <laughs> the universe is in constant motion. It's constantly expanding and contracting. Everything in it moves that way too. It moves very slowly, softly, smoothly, continuously. You could even say circularly. Let's do one more. And then feel your body outwardly not doing much. Feel all the sensations of your body when you're simply standing still. Let's do daughter on the mountaintop. This is a great movement. I love it. We're just going to turn the palms over when extending that empty left leg. And as we flow forward, the hands are going to come up. Almost like you were going to clap, but then they miss each other. Good. Nice. And notice how you can see the palm of my left hand facing you. That's because this particular style of Tai Chi has no martial application. Let's do one more. I'll do the other side while facing you. You can see what I'm talking about a little bit more easily. Look at all these tufts of things I'm dealing with on the ground here. So we're going to sink down and shift into the left leg so your right leg can extend. The palms just turn over. Look how the hands are almost like, the wrists are almost flexed here. This is what we call an open palm. And apparently the energy in your arms flows much more easily when your hand is in this position. So as you flow forward, the hands come up like you're going to clap. And the fingertips stay facing the sky so that you can maintain that open palm position. Really get the energy flowing up and down your arm. If this was a Tai Chi practice with a martial application, you would see something more like this, like cross swords. But there's no bad guy or weapon coming at you from over there or over there. So just go ahead and let your wrists and hands and fingers be open. Nice. One more. <sighs> Let's do daughter in the valley. So again, because all we're concerned about here is doing a moving mindfulness practice. That's why we're moving in all of these ways. Last one on this side. Ah. daughter in the valley with your right leg out. It's this nice big circle that we're going to draw right here. Yeah. It's always some sort of circle being drawn in the air with the hand. When the palms are nice and open here, because they're facing each other on the way up. Nice open wrists, I should say. like you're scooping up a little energy at the bottom and just bringing it up to your lips. Let's do one more. <sighs> OK, 
take a moment to feel the sensations of the body when it's not outwardly moving. And now we're going to do a few of the side-to-side -side moves. We've done a lot of moves in which uh, we are drawing circles in the air out in front of the body. Let's go ahead and do um, carry the ball to the side, which is another movement in which you're tracing a circle right in front of the body, but the hands are going to be together the whole time. So how are we going to move side to side just as easily as we now know how to move forward and back? Again, it's not a problem. So just copy me. Here we go. We're going to let the tailbone tuck a little bit more, and that's going to cause us to sink down. We're going to let all the weight shift into your right leg, but now we're going to let the whole upper body, remember it's sort of like a column, rotate to the right a little bit as well. And the way you'll know if that happened is you're going to notice that your belly button is suddenly pointing off, you know, kind of over your right toe, and you'll notice that your shoulders rotated a little bit. The, you're going to notice that one of your shoulders is in back now. It's probably your right shoulder. So just put that hand up like you're going to wave. And then just cover it with your other hand. Like you have the same ball in your hand that you had during around the platter variation. Now your left leg is probably feeling very empty. So just let the heel kind of slide away to the side. Heel first. That way you won't step farther than you comfortably can. Right? Now we're going to let all the weight flow from the bent full leg into the long, empty leg, and it's going to pull the hands along for the ride. So it's really like your upper body is just shifting from side to side as a whole, as a column, but it's also rotating a little bit at the end. On the third one, we're going to wait till all the weight is in the filling up leg, and then we're just going to stand up on it. Now normally, I would do three, another set like that going that way, and another set going that way, and then I would do three sets coming back. But um, in the interest of time, and also so I don't step off the camera, I'm just going to go back the way I came. So here we go. Let's do it together. Let your tailbone tuck a little bit. You're going to feel yourself sinking down. Let yourself shift all the way into your left leg. Let your upper body rotate slightly. You're going to put your hands up over here. Let your empty heel just glide out to the side. And here we go. If you had a shower scrubby in your hands and you had a fogged up glass shower door in front of you, you'd be scrubbing a little circle on the glass. Here's the third one. So we're going to float up and float down. Let's do one more set. So here we go, letting the tail then tuck, so we're sinking, we're shifting, we're going to rotate a little bit, we're going to place the hands and the heel, and we're going to glide, grandma's glider, only we're going side to side now. Floating up and floating down. And back again, sinking, shifting, placing the hands and the heel, and glide. Again. <sighs> Feeling the body not moving. On the outside. Nice. Let's do passing clouds. It's so, so similar to the move we just did. It's a, we had our hands doing this. Now we're going to let them move independently. It's kind of like we're going to do wax on, wax off, if you remember the old Karate Kid move. So I'll show it to you one hand at a time, um, and then we'll blend it together. Okay. So this time we're going to let the body sink. We're going to let all the weight shift into your left leg. We're going to let the upper body rotate a little bit to the left. And that's going to cause the left hand to rise. Okay? We're just going to leave this hand here until it has something to do. So let your empty leg sneak out to the side. In this case, it's your right. And we're going to let all the weight flow from the left leg into the right leg. It's going to pull the left hand along. Here we go. 
and back again. See, it's same movement pattern as when we were carrying the ball to the side. And the only difference is when the hand passes the face, it just turns slightly to face to face. It's almost like you're dredging your fingers through something thick down there like chocolate syrup and then you're going to lick them on the way back. Let's do one more like that. Now we're going to let this hand rest, but we're going to keep on shifting. And we're going to do it with your right hand now. Your hands already know how to do all this. It's just they haven't done it independently yet. So we're going to let this hand rest, but we're going to go back to the left. Now we're going to blend it all together. If you get confused, you can like get upset about that, but it probably won't help, or you can just relax, and either your uh, mixed up movement will either resolve, or you'll just have such a good time it won't matter. <laughs> uh, here we go. As you shift back towards your left, here comes the right hand into the mix. Yeah. Nice. In the interest of time, we're going to do just one more set here. And we're going to end by flowing back the direction we came. Feeling the body rest. Very nice. Let's do a few more of the side to side moves. No, I take it back. Let's do one of the moves that's a combination of forward, back, and side to side. I just love working with forward. Okay, so it's going to begin in much the same way that all of the forward back movements do. It's going to feel familiar in that way. Let's let the tailbone tuck a little bit. We're going to let all the weight shift to the right leg so the empty left leg can extend. So the left hand goes up to the shoulder and the right hand just turns over. So you probably already figured out we're going to let all the weight flow from the full back leg into the empty front leg and this hand's going to come forward but what is different about this move, what's going to happen also is the belly button is going to kind of turn towards this elbow and it's going to cause the elbow to retreat naturally by itself and let the arm have all kinds of freedom of movement back there. So just copy me. Here we go. See if you feel your Dantian flowing forward and flowing back, and also turning slightly to your right and to your left. If the Dantian had an eye, it would probably be about where the belly button is. So pretend your belly button is an eye and it's just following that retreating elbow. Let's do one more on this side. I love doing this movement right after I do passing clouds because to me it feels like a very similar movement only we're just moving in the forward backward plane rather than side to side. You see how one hand is up and the other is down and then they switch and they keep going. It's a very continuous movement. Let's do one more on this side. Feel the body not moving. We just did a couple of really awesome, continuous, very flowy movements. So let's do a couple more of the side to side movements that are very continuous, okay? Um, first I'm going to show you the basic pulling taffy motion. 
uh, and then I'm going to show you the perpetual version. Okay, so how are we going to move from side to side as easily as possible? You already know how, I'm just going to remind you. Just let the body sink down a little bit. It's simply the case of letting the tailbone tuck a little bit more. Let the body shift all the way into your right leg and let the upper body sort of rotate a little bit to your right. Good. So now you probably notice that your left shoulder is out in front. So that hand is going to do this. It's almost like it's carrying a tray of cookies right across your belly. And then let the other hand just sort of sneak up on top. You can almost sort of tickle the inside and outsides of your elbows here. It's like you're making a sandwich out of your forearms. And let your empty left heel just sort of glide out to the side. So as we shift to the left, it pulls the hands apart. That's why we call it pulling tapping. But it pulls energy between the hands. This is a very energizing series of movements. And then we rest. Let's do that again going back the other way. So you can even just let your arms hang. We're going to sink, shift, turn a little bit, place the underhand. It's always the hand that's connected to the forward shoulder. The other hand is just going to glide up on top. And let your empty heel glide out to the side. And then we're going to shift our weight. It's going to pull the hands apart. And we rest. And let's do it again. Sink, shift, rotate a little bit. Place the underhand. The other hand glides up on top. Shift your weight. Pull the tappy. back again without me talk, talk, talking. Let's do one more set like that. Take in a moment to feel the body resting. Very nice. Let's do wrist circles, Taffy. It's going to be, it's almost going to feel like a combination of bird flaps its wings and what we just did. I know that sounds crazy, but it really, it really works. So just watch me from the side here. All we're going to do at first, while we're resting, is that we're just going to let all the weight shift to the rear of the feet and let the body drop down a little bit. And the fingers are just going to drop too. And then we're going to let all the weight shift to the front of the feet as the knees lengthen. And the fingertips are going to come forward and a little bit up as well. Let's do that a couple times until it starts to feel very comfortable and very fluid. Or you could say continuous. Or you could say circular. They're synonyms, really, when you talk about Tai Chi Chef. So that's all we're doing here. We're drawing little circles in the air on either side of the body. So how are we going to put that together with pulling taffy? Very, very easy. Here we are resting. We're going to do two sets of wrist circles. One, two. Now when we drop down to the third one, the fingertips start to rise, but then we're just going to pull the taffy together and pull it apart. Nice. And back the way we came. One circle, two circles, and when we begin the third, we're going to put the taffy together and let it be pulled apart. Very fluid, right? Almost completely continual, except for these little moments of motionlessness in between the movements. Right here. And then we move.
So let's do perpetual motion tapping, which I like to think of as sort of like all the fluidity, all the fluid aspects of wrist circles tapping on steroids. So I'm going to show it to you as if we were doing it just one hand at a time. All right, let's go ahead and do it one hand at a time together. You can even just let your arms hang. Right? You'll know which arm goes where because one shoulder is going to come a little bit further out to the front, and that's going to be the hand that does this. And then when you go the other direction, it's going to switch. All right? So here we go. Just do it with me. We're sinking. We're shifting. We're rotating slightly. We're placing the arm across the belly. The only difference is we're not going to stop. So we're going to let the waist turn ever so slightly more than it normally would in the side-to-side -side moves. You're going to feel the trailing heel literally peeling itself off the ground, almost just levitating by itself, and then just put it back down again. Yeah. I'm going to end right here. I'm going to show it to you with two hands, and if you get confused, you know, you have a couple choices. You can, you can get upset about that, and it probably won't help, or you can get very relaxed about it, and that may help, or even if it doesn't help, you'll be so relaxed you won't care. Okay, so this is what it looks like. <laughs> Perpetual motion tap, and here we go. <laughs> Get bugs crawling in there. Very slowly. It's just like regular pulling taffy, only we don't stop. Feels so good. I'm going to do one more set. This will be the end of the sixth set. And feel the body resting. Nice. I think we're not going to have time to do all the movements today. We came darn close. Let's do some of the totally up and down movements. They're going to feel familiar because we already know how to, I have a lot of bugs crawling in. We already know how to do uh, wrist circles tapping. So let's do light at the top of the head, light at the temple. I'm going to be a little bit sideways to you. First, you're just going to let the body sort of sink down a little bit. You're going to gather up a little chi and bring it all the way up to the top of your head. And now we're just going to let the weight shift to the rear of the feet and shift to the front of the feet as the knees expand. And the hands are going to be a little bit like windshield wipers here. You see that? Here's the third one. Now, with your body in neutral, you're going to pull your own energy up and out of the crown of your head. Just let the palms sort of mix by each other up there for about six seconds. And then you're going to hold for an equal length of time. And now you're going to shift to the rear, shift to the front. Let's do that a couple times. And let the hands circle all the way around. You want to kind of fold the energy back in on yourself. And let's do the second half. I'll face you a little more directly for this. Bring the energy up to the temples. Good. Now mix forward. And hold. Good. Now sink. And rise. Good. Let's do that a couple times. 
Let the hands circle. <sighs> Feel the body outwardly motionless, not doing much on the outside. Let's do joyous breath. Also, very similar weight shift as what we've already experienced with wrist circles taffy and light at the top of the head, light at the temple. So we're just going to let the left leg almost flow out there by itself. There we go. We're going to straighten out the toes. The same foot position as at the beginning when we did rocking motion. And here we go, sinking down, using a special breath. It's almost like um, I'm going to clean my glasses. <sighs> but before I wipe them, you know, it's that special a special exhale, only with the lips closed. So you're going to hear it in the back of your throat. It's almost like the same sound you'd hear if you held a shell up to your ear. Right. So here we go. Up as you come forward, turning the palms over. You're going to push the air out in four equal sections as you use that special breath again. We're going to do that two more times. And close back to rest. So while we're in this magic rest position that you have decided works best for you, everybody's rest position is a little bit different from everybody else's. And sometimes it's different for each of us on different days. Right? Check in with the soles of your feet and make sure that you can feel the weight spreading all the way out to the outside margins of each foot. If you don't feel it, just notice your tailbone. Is it tucked a little bit? Are your knees soft and shifted slightly forward? Rest your palms on that invisible horizontal firm surface, about the height of your thighs if you were sitting down. And then pick a spot somewhere inside your inner landscape to pay closer attention to it. Maybe closer attention than you would ever pay under normal circumstances. I'm going to call the bell one more time. And your whole job until I call you back is just to notice what's going on in there. Here we go. So let your attention come back to the space one last time. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of checked in with my breath, both at the beginning and at the end of the practice, and I noticed a really big difference in my overall relaxation feeling inside of there. I definitely noticed that I was breathing much more easily and that I could observe my breath more easily without controlling it. I always, whenever I check in with my breath, I notice that. The minute I start to look at it, I try to control it by, by accident. I'm such a control freak. So anyway, that's all that I got for you today. That's just about all. There's not a whole bunch more there is, actually. I'm Jessica Lewis. And again, the practice that we did today was called Tai Chi Cha. And I'm the founder of a company called Sculpt your life. You can find me very easily if you Google me. And I encourage you to just do a little Tai Chi Cha any old time you feel like it. The research is really profound. It suggests uh, quite clearly that just 15 minutes of Tai Chi Cha every day can perhaps radically change 
your health and your life. That's really not a lot of skin in the game. And if you go on my website or my YouTube channel, you'll see a whole bunch of uh, content, uh, videos and all kinds of information about Tai Chi Chai. And you can just follow along with me, whether you're here on the live stream or in a class or what I, you know, in your car, <laughs> not actually while you're driving, but maybe when you're just resting, waiting for something, just follow along with me. Even if you do it mentally, that's better than not doing it at all. So thank you so much for being here again, uh, week after week. We're usually here on the second and um, fourth Wednesdays of every month at noon. And next month, I think we might be shifting the schedule a little bit. But um, have a great couple of weeks, and I'll see you soon. Okay, bye-bye.